and welcome back good evening good morning good afternoon wherever you are so uh we on the freeze back again this week um gonna do uh well what i was doing last week but where i left off um so how are you doing or i'm saying where i left off but i got raided last week at my closing minutes so that was awesome it was my first raid so that was cool it was too bad i had to leave the leave the stream a minute later so uh, talk about bad luck so i'm probably starting with a lot less viewers at the at the moment uh no matter no matter i'm, I'm just gonna continue what i uh, want to accomplish last week so if you remember I am busy setting up uh, app registrations and enterprise applications with application roles and assigning managed identities to it. If you followed along, um, you know I've been creating a couple of APIs which are talking to each other and I want them to talk to each other using an authorization header with the, uh, uh, from the managed identity of those APIs, of those applications. Um, I've done this manually in the Active Directory, uh, so in past streams, uh, and obviously this isn't, uh, that's not a very maintainable way to do, uh, to do such a thing. So now I'm scripting uh, this whole, this whole setup. So creating app registrations, um, assign uh, app registrations with application roles, um, assigning a managed identity to the corresponding enterprise application. Uh, and well, granting them permission to actually access uh, the application. So I'm, I'm uh, well. It it was uh, quite. It went quite well last week. So I was able to create the app registrations, uh, create an enterprise application, also with the appropriate application roles in the manifest. So that was uh, went quite well. Uh, what I still need to do is. Well, assigning the managed identities to uh, or granting the managed identities the appropriate roles uh, in the enterprise application which has been created so quite doable quite doable and most of the time I want to do such things with the Azure CLI uh, but before I start the stream I, I discovered uh, not everything is possible with the CLI just yet so uh, I probably have to well, install or, or use uh, the, the PowerShell, uh, Azure PowerShell uh, CMD, Let's, which isn't a problem for me, but it's well, a slight inconvenience. So how, uh, how has your week been uh, going on? I've been busy refactoring stuff, refactoring stuff at work. It was quite well. Refactoring is fun. Uh, most of the time, the code gets better. Uh, not very. It wasn't a very exciting week, though. Or at least, not as I recall. So, uh, I will probably do well some more interesting stuff in upcoming week. Um, I'm also having a having a small holiday. Well, four weeks. A vacation a four week vacation soon i think it's in about three weeks from now when does it start my vacation is starting at the 17th of august so i'm not sure if i will be streaming uh, it's a staycation so i'm at home sitting here uh, and I'm not sure yet if I will continue streaming in those weeks off. It's good to have some off time, obviously, but then again, streaming is kind of fun, or at least I like doing it, so it's also some kind of relaxation. So, uh, but, but follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, YouTube, wherever. Uh, you'll get notified if you want to see me, uh, so you can uh, just join uh, this channel. So nothing uh, for me to to uh, to share for now. 
Um, let's let's dive in uh, to the code. Uh, so I've I've started up uh, some stuff. Um, so this is the script I created last week. So I'm defining some variables over here. Um, not very fancy. So the application name for the app registration, application identifier URI. So a unique identifier. Uh, writing the output. So creating an app registration with the um, with the with variables. Also referencing uh, the speaker manifest JSON, which I have open over here. So this is the manifest which will get deployed and it will well, install all the application roles. Also defined this one because I thought it would, or I hoped it would, disable the checkbox for uh, uh, OAuth 2 ID token uh, with, with the expose an API uh, screen. It didn't. I'm still having it in because, well, I might need it later. It You can define it, or at least according to the documentation, can define it. I'm just not sure yet what it is doing. Um, what do we have more? So I'm uh, creating an application from it using this created application and granting well permissions to the graph API to read the users. So I need this, or at least I think I need this in order to validate incoming JAT tokens, which makes sense in a way. So I'm getting the user read permission. And uh, oh, to do this, the documentation states, you need to do the permission grant to activate it. What I discovered though, if you do this immediately, it will fail, it will state there is no permission to grant. So I'm waiting three minutes over here. Uh, don't know if this is long enough or, or too long or too short. It's just a random number I come up with. Um, so hopefully it's good enough and this will do the well the granting uh, and it will create an app enterprise enterprise application uh, the output looks a bit like this or it looks like this so this is useful because apparently I'm getting the client ID and with this and the object ID uh, and I'm hoping I can use these identifiers, or at least one of them, um, to get more details of the enterprise application and use it to, uh, well, in, invoke uh, this this command um, to to grant permissions to grant roles to my managed identity. So I've got the steps uh, written down over here. Um, we're going to ignore this one at the moment. So this is my delete script. So maybe I should be moving this to the bottom. Delete the test applications. So this is a random node. So this is also optional, not something I'm going to do at this exact moment. This is optional. So what I need to do now is um, assigning a managed identity of an application. So I've got a couple of managed identities uh, in the AAD and I want to grant them um, specific application roles. And the way I'm doing this normally is something like this. So there isn't a proper CLI command uh, for this. Um, so what I need to do is invoke the, the REST API of the graph and ground roles. So I've just written a blog post about this, uh, which is over here. So I've written something on this 
So stating yada yada yada, having roles, configuring it, and well, adding the roles of your mensh identity or a user to the enterprise application, and ta-da, you'll be added to it. So you can find this on my blog, uh, jan-v.nl, uh, and this is actually what I want to accomplish uh, today. I'm also stating over here, there's a corresponding, there is a Azure PowerShell command uh, commandlet for this. I'm trying to use the CLI whenever possible. And, and if I'm going too fast, just let me know. I stumbled across this issue on GitHub uh, where Hilarion wanted to, well, do some CLI commands for enterprise application configuration, like assigning a user. And well, it was opened last year and there is some, um, it doesn't have enough commands at the moment. So June 2019, there was a command, there isn't, there isn't a command to do this. So we have to resort to using Azure PowerShell. And you can use the, well, uh, Azure AD user app role assignment, or as Brandon Foxen also figured out, you can invoke a REST command, which is what I'm doing, because I'm liking the CLI more. Um, anyway, you could also use the Azure PowerShell commandlet, which is fine. I'm just avoiding it most of the time. No, no reason though. Yeah, the reason is I, I like the CLI better. Uh, I, I, I like reading the CLI better, but I can imagine a lot of system administrators like the PowerShell command plus more as it's what they're, as it's something they know. So that's, that's it. Um, so I, I was doing some searching on, um, well, how to configure the enterprise application because I also want to set the user assignment required to true. Uh, it's, an, it's a check uh, box in the properties of an enterprise application, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can't configure enterprise applications via the CLI, you probably have to do this via well, Azure PowerShell also. Doesn't matter, because we have this whole object uh, to our disposal. So I probably need to do a query on the AAD enterprise applications where, where there's an enterprise application with this client ID or this object ID. I don't know what this object ID is. It's not base64, or at least I don't think it's base64. Um, would be strange encode decode so decode yeah i know it's it's not base 64 because it's missing some values um so i don't know if this should be a GUID and how it's formatted anyway um i can probably get around with this one also So let's, let's first, because I deleted uh, all the applications last week at the end, so uh, with, with this command, let's first create a new one again. So I'm gonna uh, create, create apps, so I'm gonna run this, and it should create all the applications. Speaker application one. And this will take probably about five minutes because of the three minute delay over here. Well, that's quite fast. Let's check if the application has actually been created. So I'm here in app registrations. Um, Speaker 
application one. Okay, cool. So it has been created. Six uh, OB, yes. Six OB is the client ID. And what permissions do I have? API permissions. So the user read, which hasn't, which isn't green yet. So it's, it's it will be granted in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. Uh, and the manifest contains, well, as you can see, the app roles, which I defined in the, the manifest. Let me turn on some music first, though, some background music. I, I don't know. Well, no matter. No. Um, so that's this. And expose an API. So this contains all of the stuff. Um, yeah, so I get, I'm getting the user impersonation scope for free. I don't know why this one is added though. Because I have this and it's not defined somewhere. Maybe because, no, no, I had it before this one was added, if I'm not mistaken. No matter. User impersonation. It's it's there. It's well, doesn't matter much. What is the user impersonation scope? Apparently, I'm just right. I, oh, that's something else I searched for. <laughs> so. So this is a good question. So apparently, so if you create it via the portal, you don't get the user impersonation scope. If you do it via PowerShell, or the CLI, you do. So this is exactly what I'm seeing. Hmm. So it's not a necessary one.
Okay. First question. And not how it is. I want this configure of PS1. So it adds. Mm -hmm. Can't require. So this is a, a hole. What does this do? Okay, almost AD creation scripts. Cool stuff. Create a role. The application Oh scope. So it checks the user impersonation scope and Access user. Hmm. Okay, so it just renames the scope, but that doesn't make any sense, or at least not to me. If you know why you want to change this, let me know. But I think I'm gonna stick with it. It doesn't hurt to have it. Uh, so this one failed because it wasn't found. So three minutes is not enough. Let's make it to 40. And I'm gonna... Run this. Can I run this? Um, <laughs> Run selection. Yeah, it's probably lost all of the <laughs> error expected one argument. Probably lost this context. Okay, so 240. Cut off resource ID. App ID. Um, so this off a resource ID. Is this value and the application ID is what was it again? Client ID 6LB. So that's this one. Okay. Not found. So we're. What is it? 10 minutes in? Maybe. That's a lot of seconds. A lot of seconds. Uh -oh. So waiting 10 minutes before I can grant is quite annoying. This is what I was supposed to. So the graph resource ID, yes. Uh, 
Um, if you have permissions. Not found in the URL. So what is this B1? That's my tenant probably. Is it? B1 is a tenant, yes. How else to filter client ID is 6ID. So I'm gonna leave this open for now. Um, Folk, oh, without the quotes, okay. Without the quotes, no. So you see me copy paste it from the message. Make a change. I'm going to leave it open for now. Uh, I'm going to continue with something else. So, I've got this stuff. Mm, has it been created? No, I need this enterprise application. Oh. It's not here. What I expected because this first, this permission first needs to be granted in order for the enterprise application to exist. Hence the this. It's taking annoying. So let me let me just continue with other stuff. Assuming I'm gonna get this stuff. So which page is this? This is the page of assign a user or a group to an enterprise app. So that's what I want to do. With a specific role. So that's this one. User object ID SP object ID app role SP object ID <sighs> Is this a way to is this a service principle? Yeah it's kind kind of is I had hopes Can't I use mm. so copy paste get service principle? Oh, there's Stack Overflow. Most of the time, it's better to copy paste from over there. Get RM. Great question. Get Azure AD principal where object ID 
So I probably want to have this one. And let me open up. Mm, is there some I can use? Speakers. So this one will probably be lost, be deleted sometime soon. Um, so I got the client ID and an object ID. I think I think the client ID is the application ID. It's not recognized. I need to install the PowerShell, Azure PowerShell. Install module. Oh, yes to all is a A, yes. Version blah, blah, blah is already installed. To install version newer. to install NuGet module or enter yes and enter so why don't this work I think I've seen this before on one of my machines and it was a permission thing. Imported, so that's good to know. Um, importing the module because I don't have this one in my profile. And now I need to connect. Oh my, this is. Annoying. Yeah, it can't use the same context, obviously. Connect and share ID. And now I need to log in. Um, This is my personal. Okay, okay, I'm seeing stuff.
Maybe if I do this from the terminal, would it help? I think. Word. A shot. Type. Okay, do I need to install this module also? Probably PowerShell 7 thing. to PowerShell 5 because this stuff isn't supported in PowerShell core Windows PowerShell. Hello. So does this still work? Can I see? Sure it does. Okay, so I'm just that good. Zoom in a bit. Yes, I want to install it all. is enough, enough comments. Ok, 
Okay, import. What? I just installed it. Stop now. is here it's installed again now Don't tell me I need to reboot the system. Let me just check if this one works now. Not found, still not found, so that's strange. Or not what I expect. Clear states, I need to do this.
So these answers don't help. Maybe this one will work. So how to con how to proceed? <clears throat> Put it in an administrator prompt. Wow, that's an annoying link. So I'm gonna assume this will work someday. Too bad I can't test this mm, okay so what I want to do is something like this Where mm, where SP <coughs> it falls. Well, this one. Dot Wild. I do. Not sure if this is valid. Um, if this is valid or not. Looking to this one. Yep. 
application ID. There's a shorthand. Application ID, good. Which is even better? Oh. Okay, so now I've got the application ID. Enterprise application. Okay, so now I got this one. And with this one, I should be able to get the ID. So it's the object ID. This is the one I need. Dot object ID. So I'm gonna do an AZ REST. The object ID. Mixing and matching CLI and PowerPL. Okay, so this one, service principle. You need to get the manager and the role ID. So, which I know the role ID because it's defined over here. I'll need to read the role ID. And now I need to get the manage identity of my enterprise application. Of my, yeah. Mm. So this is the managed identity of my speakers API. Um, searching. Yeah, great. Uh, I need this one. So I know the name of my managed identity, which needs permission. something from over here this play name is so that's this one managed identity this one and I need the object ID from this one also something like this but this this looks about right Oh, Tom, so 
just for your information you can use the module SharePoint PNP PowerShell online to generate apps. I've never heard of such an app. Th thanks for pointing this out. Sorry for being a bit late. Oh, even more. Initialize. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, this is indeed. Well, it's SharePoint, PNP. It's been like 10 years since I did something in SharePoint. So I haven't heard of these commandlets. What is it? Patterns and practices. Hmm. Installation. Every month new scripts. Okay, so this is cool. Yeah, I can imagine why SharePoint people need this. So you found this. Going to start with SharePoint modernization. So are you a SharePoint dev in, in the daily life or just stumbled across this? Three six five. Well, so you you have to do, do three sixty five stuff, which also includes a bit of SharePoint though. Or SPLT needed this. So I need to post the script. That's cool. Um, let me post for uh, language power. Location name. Oh, nice. So oh, it's certificate. Hmm. Cool, cool. So this is the user read. So it's probably doing a lot of stuff underneath. Let me check. So this. Releases GitHub. Is there a direct link? No. Interesting. Thanks. Come on. So to see what's what's inside this stuff. So add app. Add an application. Command load. So these are probably SharePoint apps. I'm just gonna gonna try it out what you just sent me. So I have to install this stuff. Let's see if this actually works. I 
still probably still can log into uh, which version do you want to install I think the online version don't want to do on-prem SharePoint stuff Okay, so now I can probably do, <clears throat> I might be able to do what you just told me. Uh, so which is this script? Hmm. So this should be my tenant. Uh, what's the tenant's name? I have to get this right. I think it's something like Jan Fe, Jan Fe, Jan, yeah. Something like this. Helps user not read. And I don't need this. My SharePoint test app. Um, so outpass, difficult password, it creates an app with a certificate. Okay, so, the can I think there's a DTEMP live coding folder, yes there is. Wonder what this will do. Where's the terminal? It's not recognized. Sure, it's not. Maybe you should close it. Close it all. It's it's. Of course, Windows PowerShell, so I might need to reboot. Well, I don't think that's necessary, but I'm not surprised at anything anymore. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should put this in one line. Just to put this to interface to. Yeah. That's what I figured, yes. Wow, why isn't it picking up this stuff? Rebooting halfway in a stream isn't exactly good for the stream. Yeah, the modules aren't loading, so I have... Uh, like what I wanted to do is uh, import module Azure name Azure AD and it can find it, but it's actually there in both the Windows PowerShell and the Core PowerShell. So. But I, apparently logging in doesn't work over here because it's using some, well, cryptography stuff which isn't in uh, available in PowerShell Core. <clears throat> Can you open a non-terminal app shell? Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, Power shell. But this is the the normal PowerShell. Let's zoom it in a bit. I also did this with the, the admin, administrator shell. So all of them can find it. And where is it? Import module. So in the administrator, it can't find it. 
and it can't find it in the normal PowerShell either. Strange. Yeah, yeah, indeed strange. I'm kind of lost over here because I do need this stuff now. Yes, the core environment doesn't support it, so. Mm. There is, of course, the sandbox, Windows sandbox. I haven't had it, I haven't got it installed. Apps and features. Optional features. No. Where is it? Where is it? Maybe if I can boot a sandbox VM, it might work. Um, I thought it was somewhere over here. Programs and features. Windows features. Sandbox. Yeah, probably uh, completed requested changes. So no reboot so far. Windows Sandbox. Where is it? It's starting up. Starting up on this screen. Oh, there it is. So this is something. So it's uh, not very fast. Oh. You can copy paste, which, or at least I can copy paste to the sandbox, which makes sense though. As it's a sandbox, five module is not recognized. Okay. of a PowerShell guru, which I might have guessed by now. Since you're using lower version, it's not recognized. PS version table. So this is 5.1, what am I using in my, also 5.1. Mm. So would this be blocked inside this sandbox? I also got a virtual machine which I'm gonna spin up in Azure so I've got a mach virtual machine in Azure which I'm doing my daily development work in I'm spinning it up right now Let's see if I can execute the commands from over there oh, x86 yeah This be a hint. No. I'm gonna close the other power shells also.
effects provider. So, there, there does work. Uh, set execution policy unrestricted. Yes. No, still nothing. So the sandbox isn't helping. Can I just close it? Are you sure you want to close the sandbox? It's closed, all content will be discarded and lost. Okay, cool. Still got the VPN on for this machine. Make it a bit smaller. Thanks for the tip though. So if the loading of the modules works, it will probably be a big uh, time saver, the, the initialize PNP PowerShell automation command. Getting installed on this machine, X is denied, X to the cloud file is denied. What? Install package. Scope your view. Sure. Still not. Which June twenty twenty? Okay. The 
behind the proxy. I'm not working behind the proxy. Administrator. Okay, so it works on this machine, or at least it looks like it's working. Um, so, where is my script? Um, let, me, let me first try the stuff from over there. Can I use the terminal now? <clears throat> okay, so it's definitely my machine. Let me just quickly change. expected to see something now, a pop-up. Somewhere. Connect Azure ID. Should get a prompt now. Hmm. I'm not getting a prompt from terminal. To approve my request. Ah, oh, there's a phone over here. Cool, cool. So I've got a phone hanging over there. And now I'm connected so I can do stuff. Finally. Not exactly what I wanted. So 
So now I'm connected. Um, let's see. Uh, I still need the enterprise application. So first, where was it? It's taken long enough now. This one. If I'm still getting 404, something else is wrong. This is strange. Anyway, so I probably need to create this one myself for now. Well, app registration. <coughs> Figure it out later. One speaker application one. So API permissions. Yes. Refresh. No, that's not actually necessary to the the admin consent. Add permission user read. Delegated. User read. Hmm. So, if I remove it first, refresh. Do this again. So delegate user reads. Add. Updating, updating. Refresh. I had expected to be to have some green states check mark over here. So this one has been created now. Um, so what I'm getting over here is the client ID. So I can check. Is there a manifest thing over here? No. Speaker application one. Maybe a web. I'm gonna search. So where is the RDP? This one, so copy. And over here. Error executing. Authentication unauthorized. Use words not found. Okay, so that's. other things uh, can you so the an ID is let's see if this one works parameter mm. I'm using the correct command. Sorry, sorry. Probably won't go too fast right now. So 
search my full name. Object ID. Ah. Um. No, AV, AD. This, so this is the app registration. I think. Let me let me just check to make sure. Copy. Uh, oh, I've got this one in code, the registration ID, which is six LB something something. No subscription found in this context. So I'm connected to the tenant. So. Okay, and how do I select the subscription? Oh, I don't need to select the subscription because it's in the tenant. Doesn't exist. Resource doesn't exist. Okay. And does this one exist? Resource doesn't exist. Application ID, App registration. So as good as my first session went. Oh, this is the object ID. Sorry. Now I'm just busy figuring out why stuff doesn't work. So is principal names. Application ID. Yeah, but I'm on. Um, yeah, I'm switching between the CLI and Azure PowerShell, right? I'm not using the RM. Or at least. Or do you mean something else? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like using the Azure CLI, but apparently working with enterprise applications doesn't work in the CLI. So now I have to use PowerShell. I could prob it's probably a better idea to rewrite everything to Azure PowerShell as it's well complete compared to well this stuff which isn't complete uh, the CLI uh, stuff which is complete I, I think it's a bit more readable but no one has anything no one needs readable stuff if it doesn't work so id so I... okay
Mm, let's let's see if I can. Check the box. Get AZ principle. Get AZ AD source principle. And I know what application ID is. Get Put this in code. Which is what I six of these, I think something. Yes. First enterprise application created. I can use search principle name. That's promising. This does look get a z oh sorry oh now I see what you mean get a z a d Oh, 
Okay. Hmm. Also oh, display. So this is the uh, principle. But this isn't the minus adapty I need. Object ID, I think it's the object ID. It's 717 717. Okay, so the ID. Which is what I get from over there. And enterprise application also the and over here I did connect. So let's see how how did I log in? Connect a Z account, which is different from Connect Azure ID. Yeah, so I got that's now I understand what you were saying, Tom. Azure ID user. So you're also getting errors with Dream Service Principles using Azure ID module. Okay. 
Oh, it's all already past 10. connect AG account so the Azure ID this stuff isn't working for me this evening so I'm gonna replace it to do at uh, the source principle uh, information is I want to uh, or I need the identifier the object identifier in order to grant app roles to uh, so let me make it a bit more visual so I have do I still have yeah this one still exists so what I want to accomplish, oh, this one doesn't have, okay, wrong, wrong example. Oh, so these are the, have I deleted them already? Could also be the case. No, 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 this, this is it. So I, uh, having these service principles, I want to grant, uh, the managed identities of my applications specific roles so the reader and writer role in this case so in order to do so I need the ID of the enterprise application for doing the AZ REST or I could also use the what was the command what was the command? Uh, new Azure ID app role assignment. So I can I know this one. Uh, am I? So I know this one, the app role. I just need well the the resource ID. Uh, so that's why I need it. But seeing it's uh, quite late already, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the show. So a lot of stuff, did a lot of stuff, or figured out, tried to figure out a lot of stuff. Thanks for the help, uh, Tom. Um, so apparently my machine isn't 
doing what it's supposed to while importing PowerShell modules. Uh, I'm going to figure that out later this week, uh, why this is happening um, offline though. And I hope, well, I hope to finish this week, but I hope to finish next week setting up all of the stuff scripted from my own machine and not this this VM I have in Azure. Let me let me just close it down because this is costing me serious euros. Uh, shut down. Okay, shut down, and now I need to stop it to get it deallocated in Azure. Um, so good stuff. Thanks for the SharePoint uh, uh, module. Um, I will definitely check it out. But that's quite awesome. To have this stuff set up. Yeah, yeah, me too. And uh, have a great day, evening, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. Um, hope to see you next week. Maybe you can help out again. And uh, for now, thank you for watching and see you next week, hopefully.